Digitalization obviously has had a huge impact on how companies do business. Um, you know, re relevant to the real estate industry, um, I think what's important to note is that a lot of the systems that um, contain and maintain the relevant data, um, such as homeowner information and all of the other information that's submitted as part of the process, uh, is now digital, which means it's accessible um, one way or another digitally, um, you know, hopefully securely, but um, that's basically where the, the challenge is. Um, so by digitalizing all that information and getting away from all the paperwork, um, we are essentially creating a challenge where, A, we need to store this information securely, and also we need to process the information securely, um, which obviously involve a huge and very complex supply chain. Um, you know, all the various conveyance, um, lawyers, attorneys, uh, banks, financial institutions, you know, communication with all those um, companies, uh, you know, obviously is done digitally um, and not always securely. So, so that's the part that from a real estate industry um, specific, I think is, is very relevant from a digitalization. Another angle from a real estate uh, industry and the security that goes with that um, is uh, your typical home security and smart building type security. Um, I know you have more questions on that, um, but obviously the more of those technologies become relevant um, in, in real estate, you know, the more the challenges are in maintaining the security around those systems and controls. So, so that's pretty much what um, I think is um, driving the expansion of the cyber risk um, and obviously um, giving it a large exposure to, you know, to various uh, potential um, yeah, threats coming out from, you know, from various uh, bad actors. I don't want to say that um, in terms of real estate industry, um, you know, that compares in a, in, a, in a specific way. I don't think that um, there are such studies. Um, what is relevant is, again, um, the security of the information, which is specific to the industry. Um, so from one angle, the security of the information, um, as I explained earlier, part of all the various uh, processes in supply chain in terms of, um, you know, real estate, um, you know, obviously selling and, and buying uh, estates. Um, from a pure building perspective, um, I think the, the common cyber threats are uh, related to the various types of technologies used in those um, buildings, and that includes home security as well. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of those technologies were initially built um, without security in mind. And, and, you know, it's unfortunately the way it is. Um, it takes normally time and maturity for companies to realize that you can't just you know, have a cool gadget, so you need to actually have it secure. You can't just leave it open and, you know, pray that nobody's going to see it and nobody's going to target it. So so those two aspects, and again, I'm answering the question two-way because it's, um, you know, when we talk about real estate, there's, uh, you know, essentially two potential areas of, uh, of risk. And the one is the data security, um, which goes with um, the operation of a real estate company. Uh, and the other one is the security of the various um, estates, or buildings, or houses, or yeah, anything that basically um, forms part of that. Unfortunately, my opinion is that they're not prepared, um, and there's various reasons for that. Um, I, I think um, in a lot of cases, um, you know, the real estate companies are, uh, you know, small operations, um, especially the various branches and offices. You know, typically it's a couple of people. Uh, you know, manning such offers um, and for them to be security savvy and, and mature enough to understand the potential threats and what does it mean to secure information? You know, a lot of times, um, you know, they just don't have that. Um, you know, also, you know, like it or not, I mean, there's, you know, there's various types of, of people in the industry. Um, it's not specific to one age group, but the majority of people in this industry are, are not focusing around technology. They're focusing around, um, you know, obviously selling property or building properties. Um, they're not really um, yeah, focusing on the IT component or, or cybersecurity component um, in those industries. And a lot of them have the unfortunate attitude that, uh, you know what, um, who's going to target me? I'm a small operation. Uh, and the reality is that that's not how it works. Um, you know, people become targets not because 
somebody specifically targeting them, it's because they're an easy target. Um, and in a lot of times, you know, exposing those and, and obviously um, stealing the information out of those companies uh, is very simple, very easy. Um, and because of that, um, you know, it becomes an easy target. And going back to what uh, we were talking earlier on, specific to the real estate industry, there's a lot of um, complexity in the, in the supply chain. So there's a lot of loopholes where that can be exploited um, in terms of stealing information uh, and, and also very sensitive information. As I mentioned, you know, in real estate, you know, if somebody's applying for a mortgage uh, or, you know, home loan, um, they will um, typically provide a whole stack of personal information, a whole stack of financial information. Um, and a lot of time that information is sufficient to, to actually, you know, um, pretty much uh, take that information and, uh, you know, have uh, whatever fraud, um, including identity theft, um, you know, creating different types of financial fraud in terms of creating accounts, creating information. Uh, and, and also, you know, a lot of time that information also carries personal information and which can be used for other um, obviously malicious intent and reasons. Uh, a very common thing in, in America, for example, is that celebrities don't want to dispose, disclose their information in terms of, uh, you know, home address and, um, you know, anything to do with, uh, you know, with their estate. Uh, and if that information goes into the wrong hand, well, then, you know, obviously then you have the physical security component of somebody targeting them and coming to their house for whatever reason, uh, robbery or just, you know, harassing them. Um, so the same principle applies. I mean, obviously in South Africa, that's not necessarily the angle. Um, you know, we have other challenges and, and other reasons why people don't want to show that information. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the same, you know, same idea. You know, if you give that information out or if you make it easily accessible, uh, somebody will find um, a way of exploiting that. It's as simple as that. And depending on the context, um, you know, if it's an um, organization which, um, a state organization that um, is involved in the building of, of um, you know, various estates and, and buildings and, and including all those new smart technologies and smart building technologies, um, there's various components that need to be taken into account. There are certain standards in place um, that focus around the security. A lot of times um, those technology make also use of IT technology. So for example, from a connectivity perspective, they will have to plug in somehow and somewhere in order to be accessible remotely uh, via some form of internet connectivity. Um, so the various components about securing those kind of environments, uh, you know, goes back to um, general IT security principles, um, which, you know, in the IT world, we have fairly mature businesses now and understanding those risks. They do have various controls in place uh, in terms of, uh, you know, network security protection, uh, data security protection, etc. Um, again, unfortunately, um, when we talk about buildings, uh, we tapping into another area, which is the so-called uh, Internet of Things security, i.e. devices and not necessarily computers, um, that were designed in a way that, you know, they can be exploited because they have a very specific function. Uh, I mean, for example, um, you know, there's various, um, you know, power intelligence systems. Um, which, uh, you know, have a, a primary reason to, you know, control the power in the building. Um, and, uh, you know, typically it's not necessarily, uh, a, you know, something that people will focus around security. But having said that, the obvious, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, exploitable uh, angle would be to take that and to, um, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, you can even ransom a building of, uh, telling them, you know, you're not going to switch on their power and, and things like that. So obviously there's various ways of, of uh, you know, having malicious intent and exploiting that for, for the wrong reasons. Um, and I mean, that can be applicable to any technologies. I'm just using power, but I mean, that could be uh, video monitoring. It could be access control systems. It could be uh, cooling systems. I mean, there's been a lot of cases of ransomware where people have ransomed, um, you know, buildings such as hospitals, for example, and you know, needless to say, uh, all those um, uh, different types of functions uh, have, um, you know, a very serious impact on such operation. Um, and a lot of those companies are prepared to pay for that. And I'm trying not to, uh, 
to move away from the real estate um, uh, angle. But the reality is that, um, you know, all those buildings somehow relate to real estate and the various types of building technologies and smart technologies. On the other angle, um, on the other hand, which is what I was saying earlier on, there's two angles here. Um, on the other hand, the data security component, it definitely, uh, there's various, various controls that can be put in place to protect that kind of information. So um, encryption and security of data is top on the list. Um, security awareness is always a must. And the reason for that is very simple. No matter how good your controls are technically, uh, there's always ways of bypassing those as a human being. Um, so if you go and click on the wrong link um, and you give access to people, you give your password to somebody, well, obviously you're bypassing those controls. So, um, so the point is that um, there is a lot that can be done um, because of a lot of the, the real estate companies do not necessarily have those skills in house. It's always advisable to engage with the right partner, the right professional that can give them the right advice and the right context for them. So all those kind of assessments and, and essentially, um, you know, understanding the risk specific to the organization has to be done, um, you know, in the context of the organization. So we would like to talk generically, but, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to rolling up your sleeve and doing the work, it has to be in the context of the organization.